climate events, extreme climate events, acidification, overfishing, loss of biodiversity. Our oceans are in danger. In the face of this urgency, France has committed itself already to protect biodiversity in the high seas and polar environments within the National Assembly of the United Nations to bring solution to the pollution of plastic in the oceans. Oceans represent 70% of the surface of the globe and are indispensable for life. And to preserve this common good, the heads of states and governments, leaders of international organizations and civil society and companies will act collectively towards this objective to protect marine ecosystems and promote sustainable fishing, to fight against pollutions, develop oceans, uh, solution facing the climate change, and renew the governance, uh, renovate governance of oceans in the One Ocean Summit on the 9th, 10th, and 11th of February in Brest. Bonjour, comme cette petite... Good morning. As this uh, video, short video showed you, we are inviting you to Brest from the 9th to the 11th of February for the One Ocean Summit, the first One Ocean Summit for a more sustainable ocean. And we are, I'm very glad that uh, we be able to give all of you who are in the four corners of the world in all the languages possible in different time zones some of the elements and answers to the questions that you're asking yourself with regard to a more sustainable ocean commitment with the guests uh, this afternoon in Paris. We are in the uh, KDOC, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Europe. Mr. Jean-Louis Le Drian, its minister, have invited us with his colleagues, Mrs. Annick Gerard, the Minister of the Seas, and Mrs. Berenger Abbas, Secretary of State for the Ministry of Ecological Transition in charge of biodiversity. So you will have the opportunity during this hour to avail of testimonies from numerous guests. Some have come from far away, some are far away, but I'd like to first leave our host, uh, Minister of Europe and Foreign Affairs, Mr. Le Drian, to give you his welcome words. Merci, Monsieur Thank you very much, Ambassador. Ministers, uh, dear Annick, dear Béranger, Mr. Special Envoy of the Secretary General of the United Nations, dear Peter Thompson, members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen. The seas and the oceans are, of course, at the heart of our history and our collective imagination because it is by sailing over them in every which way that our humanity, little by little, learned to project itself on the horizon of a common world, sometimes in the sharing trade and enthusiasm of long-distance travel and crossings. François Gabar, I welcome you. I'm very happy to have you with us. We'll undoubtedly be able to testify to this, and sometimes at the tragic moment of battles and the violence of conquests. But today, uh, these vast expanses that, that occupy more than 70% of the surface of our planet are also at the heart of uh, the challenges of the 21st century. And for me, it is here that uh, is expressed most clearly the fundamental ambiguity of these challenges, which, because they are those of a world in the course of brutalization and in a state of environmental emergency, both calling for as much lucidity in the balance of forces as determination to act collectively at the service of our planet. The fact is that the seas and the oceans are all at the same time contentious spaces, disputed spaces, and public commons in danger. Yes, the seas and oceans are disputed areas. That is to say, spaces of a strong tension and strategic rivalry. That is to say, spaces where there could be the development of different trafficking as well as illegal fishing 
fishing, undeclared, unregulated fishing. That is to say, spaces where there's the questioning of uh, the sovereignty of the states and that of international law in particular and, and the principle of free circulation in the seas. That is to say, spaces of intense economic competition because globalization is above all a massive maritimization of our commercial trade and our value chain. But seas and oceans are also, and at the same time, global commons that are in danger. That is to say, invaluable carbon sinks whose balance is threatened through acceleration of climate changes, which could precisely contribute in regulating the latter. That is to say, precious ecosystems that guarantee our biodiversity and are necessary to the subsistence and livelihoods of more than 3 billion people whose uh, Survival is endangered through the climate change, pollution, over-exploitation of resources and artificialization of coasts. That is why we consider that everything that is happening on the seas and the oceans engages our future and that we have a fundamental interest in it, interest in terms of security, economic interests, and what we have to also call ecological interests. Interests uh, to which one can add uh, the unique responsibility linked to history and geography of our country, making France one of the leading maritime and ocean powers and uh, with the second largest exclusive economic zone in the world, uh, making it uh, one of uh, the uh, various powers uh, to bring equilibrium in the seas. These interests and this responsibility, it is as Europeans that we wish to assume them. Because in this world of power play and existential challenges, it is only as Europeans that we will be able to roll out on the seas and oceans a complete uh, enough job politics uh, to give a concrete reach to our values, our commitments for the planet, and our concern to keep alive in the present a multilateralism of action, that of proof and results with our partners of all continents. One of uh, the challenges of the Ministerial Forum on the Indo-Pacific that France will be organizing on the 22nd of February in Paris, within the framework of the French Presidency of the Council of the EU, will precisely be to focus concretely on questions of security, blue economy, or development again. This geopolitics of the seas and the oceans without which we would not be able to build a true European geopolitics of the 21st century. At the eve of this meeting, I wish to, to remind these few observations and remind uh, the meaning of these efforts uh, to the French and the Europeans to respond to them, because it is basically within this framework that the One Ocean Summit uh, fits uh, that we will be organizing in Paris from the 9th to the 11th of February upon the initiative of the President of the Republic and about 20 heads of states and companies will be participating. The challenge is, the issue is to um, go further, you know, focus on uh, the issues of seas and the oceans, the one the concept of one uh, planet summit, which uh, namely associates all of the actors concerned, the states, international organizations and NGOs, researchers and companies that have proven their worth putting together coalitions, but also accelerating the financing of initiatives in favor of the climate, biodiversity, and already in favor of oceans, and this since 2017. The stakes, these challenges, it is through concrete, immediate, and efficient actions that we'll be able to move forward on these uh, decisive subjects, the protection of ocean ecosystem, preservation of fisheries, uh, the fight against pollution. I have competition, says the minister. Protection against uh, pollution, in particular plastic pollution. Gaining awareness of the role of the marine environment in the fight against climate change. And finally, the improvement of the inclusion of oceans in international environmental negotiations. And I'm thinking in particular of this major negotiation concerning the protection of the high seas carried out for several years now under the auspices of the United Nations, to which the Brest Summit will, I hope, be able to lend a decisive support. And I'd I'd like to welcome to this effect the action of Jimmy Pain and uh, Unida Assange, who have really worked a lot on this subject. Um, 
the challenge is also a strong mobilization of the European Commission to build a dynamic of collective mobilization uh, in advance of several international, important international meetings which will punctuate the months to come. I'm thinking in particular of the conference planned at the end of June in Lisbon to support the implementation of uh, the uh, SDG of the 2030 Agenda of the United Nations for Sustainable Conservation and uh, exploitation of oceans. This is what I wanted to say to you, my friends, and without further ado, I'd like to give the floor to my colleague, Anik Shihata. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Yves. Uh, uh, Barbara and Berenger are here uh, as well on this subject. And uh, hello to all of you, dear friends. Uh, I want to say we're, we're, we're there. We, you know, for those who some months ago started to work on this subject, uh, we want to say that yes, uh, the summit of Brest uh, is um, a historic opportunity that. Uh, carries the challenges which uh, are attached to the oceans at the highest uh, international level, which is that of the head of, heads of states and government. In the past, as Secretary of State to Development and Francophonie, I'd been very active in the diplomacy of sustainable development and the environment, namely in the cause of COP21 and the Paris Agreement on climate in 2015. And I must say that uh, it is the first time that uh, we are witnessing such a wide mobilization around challenges linked to the oceans. These challenges, which were but a subchapter of negotiations on climate or biodiversity, are finally given their full importance that they deserve uh, in international discussions. Now, France, allow me to emphasize, has been a pioneer on the subject of the governance of oceans by recreating a Ministry of the Seas that I have the honor, honor of heading and the the mission of which is to better carry to the international field these challenges alongside Jean-Yves Le Drian, who has carried them forwards before me. And uh, we are not that many to have made this choice. Portugal, Portugal also has a Ministry of the Seas, and it is in Lisbon. We will go. That will be holding the United Nations Conference on Oceans in June. So I call upon Europe to be even more sea uh, and uh, encourage more colleagues uh, but that they become ministers of the seas. And with my friend Ricardo Serrano Santos uh, of Portugal, we wish this pres French presidency of the Council of the EU carried this subject forwards for the for Europe. And I'm convinced that that uh, we will create the desire in other European states to draw inspiration from our experience to create, in turn, the ministry, uh, ministries of seas. Ministries that, of course, will carry high the interests of the oceans and uh, those who depend on it in a European and international fora. The minister has just reminded us of the different challenges that we have to respond to. And amongst these challenges, I wish to emphasize four on which I am particularly mobilized to prepare this summit. We must already complete the edification of an international framework which is protective of for seafarers as well as uh, fish, fishing resources. I must not be told that both the two are pitted against each other. On the contrary, they complement each other. And in developing the more ambitious standards for the safety of ships in the interest of the protection of fishermen all over the world, whose profession is already one of the most exposed from an accident point of view, also contributes in fighting against illegal fishing. Everybody knows that illegal fishing, often the fact of ships that are not up to the standards, fighting against the safety of fishermen is to fight against the for the improvement of the conditions of work and therefore for the protection of resources. That is the sense of the mobilization underway to finally complete the Terra Molinos Convention and above all to ratify the Cape Agreement. What does this mean? Let us save this agreement, because these instruments, if they're not, if they're not ratified by the end of 2022, because it's been 10 years that we committed ourselves to do so, well then these of this agreement will not be celebrating its 10th anniversary, not be celebrating a success, but it will be a failure. 
So we need to find the six additional countries to ratify this agreement, and I hope that in Brest that we will meet this commitment. The second challenge is to accelerate the effort of greening maritime transport. The European Commission has uh, encouraged us with the uh, obje uh, adjustment of the Objective 55 packet package um, uh, is a series of regulations in decarbonization in all the fields of which the maritime and the ambition to reduce by 55 percent the greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and we hope to be able to in Brez to take with us uh, the big European ship owners Mr. Ambassador you've been working on this and the uh, ship builders uh, the major European ports in the virtuous uh, approach of label labeling and the Fontenoy du Maritime has opened the path to tax breaks for decarbonated propulsion and enlarging the possibility of public guarantees being granted. Uh, and uh, we are working on several uh, areas here, and there are different projects are being supported. And the Summit of Price is an opportunity to take with us beyond our European frontiers of uh, European borders to have other countries join us, maintain the dynamic around uh, less polluting transportation in the Mediterranean. That is the finality of the action plan for Mediterranean exemplary for 2030 that I've had the opportunity of presenting in Marseille with a resolute action on the aspects of biodiversity and creation, of course, of particularly vulnerable maritime zones. France with Italy and Spain, namely, have been able to take other countries of both sides of the Mediterranean into this dynamic with them. The third challenge often uh, very rightly emphasized as uh, maybe one that is uh, working on oceans, on the better knowledge, and that often uh, gets us to say we know better the surface of the moon and Mars than the oceans. So, so you know, outside the challenge of knowledge that is uh, posed, and uh, with uh, my colleague Fadi Vidal of the European Commission, I intend to advance our investments in the field of operational oceanography. This practical application of science is still ill known by our citizens and yet and yet it is more and more strategic to help uh, public authorities and private stakeholders to confront the challenges of the oceans and I want to add here that o oceanography uh, is uh, in you know, a field where France represents excellence and carries excellence forward. And I'm thinking of um, the Mercator Océan, the head of quarters of which in Toulouse, which cooperates with Italy, Spain, Norway, and Great Britain. Mercator Océan is a major actor of the Copernicus program of the European Union. And we share all here a common desire to strengthen Europe in this field, and particularly to give a role and a more important mission to Mercator Océan Ocean. And this work is underway. And then the fourth and last challenge, which is important in my eyes, is to uh, preserve a maritime empl employment and uh, to improve the social standards in this field. Every day, we, uh, you know, are products that are, you know, transported by boat, by ships, and uh, we know the capacity that men and women have to ensure the security of uh, the supplies uh, of our country. There's a lot that remains to be done in this field and also in the training of, say, and I must say that the social subjects, such as the environmental challenges, are at the very heart of the debates and discussions that we'll be carrying out, and in particular, in La Rochelle, where we're organizing a meeting of the European ministers, a colloquium, high-level symposium, where the ministers, European ministers will be participating, and I'll have the honor of welcoming them. Just like many youth and uh, ambassadors of the maritime field, young professionals who will be accompanying us. Uh, uh, and who are partners of uh, the NGO Surfinder and who will be expressing in a while themselves to say that it is also the opportunity in Brest to give a reminder of all these elements. So I'm delighted, of course, uh, welcome this launch, the Rochelle Encounters, their continuity in Brest, the work that we will all be carrying out together. And uh, thank you for your attention, of course. And uh, if I may, may I uh, invite you to uh, listen to the message of my colleague, Madame Berenger Abba, Secretary of State, Ministry of 
of Ecological Transitions in Charge of Biodiversity. On va vous entendre. On vous voit, Madame la Secrétaire d'État. Je pense que le son. Madame la Secretary of State, we see you, but we don't hear you yet. Bonjour à tous. Merci. Good afternoon, Merci, everybody. Thank you, Jean-Yves. Thank you, Annick. Thank you for animating so brilliantly this meeting. We have this common good finding the right balances of the human activity and a natural heritage that needs to be preserved. It's one of the keys of our fight against climate warming and the preservation of biodiversity. This ocean which nourishes us, allows us to breathe, feeds us. The interpreter is terribly sorry, but the sound has a lot of echoes, so I'll do my best in interpreting for you. We're talking about all the, the, the accidents that take place uh, among seafaring people, the seamen, uh, fishermen. The importance of fight against pollution. Two thirds of the ocean are under international jurisdiction and who, which have no regulatory protection. The important to protect them against exploitation, the pillage of their natural resources, threatening these spaces. Important to take the commitments forward. Looking for the balance between conservation and human activities, economic and tourism related activities in the special schedule because of the One Ocean Summit. Que bientôt nous pour la, la COP15 de l'université et en amont également de cette Nations Unies sur les océans en juin à Lisbonne. Aujourd'hui, nous savons et nous sommes dans ce moment de mobilisation, ce moment de mobilisation et d'action. Nous avons ce scientific action. But I hope you can hear me, and apparently, Madam, no, we cannot. No, Mr., the sound is not good at all. We do understand the spirit of what you are saying to us, but if it was possible for you, maybe, maybe the technicians could help out to save the link, or maybe we could have you do a small conclusion. Yes, I'm going to conclude because indeed it seems difficult. This protection of spaces, of species, fight against pollution, program for the Mediterranean, blue carbon, and so many commitments that you have at the national level that I will present to you. Thank you very much. This mobilization upstream of the press meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much.
you are in the field you're in the field nobody could have imagined that you were underwater <laughs> but uh, there was the, 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 that feeling uh, thank you thank you minister thank you ministers uh, dear peter you are the special envoy of the secretary general of the united nations for oceans as you see france is very mobilized uh, the authorities the civil society there's a great expectation for the Brest Summit. We have amongst us uh, eminent personalities that I can mention, Jean-Louis Etienne, the big explorer, the great explorer who's preparing a big moment. Thanks to the polar pod in the Antarctic, Pascal Lamy, the European mission has interested him in him, the Starfish mission carrying the summit with us. We have the representatives of industry, cluster mari maritime cluster, Saint-Sernave, lots of authorities here that can tell you that France wishes uh, to welcome this uh, summit, wants really to do so, will do so in a few days' time. You were instrumental yourself personally in the organization, and I'd like to, on behalf of the ministers present here and the government and the President of the Republic, to thank you very much for your help. But sitting as we are, May I request you why, why ask you why Brest, why France, and why are you here today? Thank you, Peter. You can speak from where you sit, from here. You can stay where you wish. Otherwise, you'll have you'll become French and European de facto behind the flags. So maybe I could just request you to stay sitting where you are. If you want to stand up, if you, if if. Mr. Le Drian allows me, you, you can, you can. Uh, I think this is working. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, please, good, good. Peter. Well, thanks very much. Uh, don't, don't worry, you can join the, the uh, yeah, you'll feel better. Um, so, Mr. Minister, and Madam Minister, and Ambassador, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, all courtesies observed, as we say at the UN, and uh, warm greetings. And these things will, I don't need them. Thank you very much. Look, I'll give you my daily mantra. No healthy planet without a healthy ocean and the ocean's health is measurably in decline okay that's my daily mantra i'm a grandfather i care about that decline 2022 is the year we can stop the decline now uh, i don't know what the french translation for glib is but that is not a glib statement it is actually factually possible to stop the decline of the ocean's health in 2022. And if I give you uh, six meetings, just six meetings, where if the international community does the right thing, reaches consensus at these six meetings to do the right thing, we will have stopped the decline. We want to fix the ocean. That's a job for our children and our grandchildren. You know, the processes that have been put in place by ocean warming and acidification and so on, this is going to take a long time to set right. But our children and our grandchildren will be up to it. But we can stop the decline in 2022. And how are we going to do that? Firstly, you've got the harmful fisheries subsidies. $30 billion of public monies going to largely industrial fishing fleets, $30 billion every year, to chase diminishing stocks of fish out in the high seas. What kind of human madness is that? We can stop that. The WTO has been considering this for two decades. And the postponed ministerial meeting of WTO will happen sometime this year. And this is low-hanging fruit. We can stop those harmful fishery subsidies. We can put that $30 billion to positive work in sustainable agriculture and development of seafood and so, uh, of seaweed and so on. So that's harmful fisheries subsidies. That's one. Second one is stop plastic pollution. We dump 11 million tons of plastic into the ocean every year. On current trends, we're going to double that amount by 2030. We're going to triple it by 2050. More plastic in the ocean than fish. It's, it, again, human madness. And we, we can stop that. There is a proposal which France and many other countries are supporting now for at the end of February next month for the initiation of a legally binding international treaty to stop plastic pollution. Let's make it happen. Thirdly, we've got the BBNJ, 
which if we reach the conclusion of this ongoing negotiation by the member states of the United Nations to get a uh, robust treaty for the governance of the high seas, how much better off the ocean will be. Fourthly, we have the, uh, what is called the CBD COP15, that's the Biodiversity COP, being held in Kunming in China. And there we have the possibility of introducing, and again, a lot of strong support from big countries and small, of a 30 by 30. In other words, 30% of the planet protected by the year 2030. Imagine what that means for marine protected areas. It's a complete game changer for the ocean to have 30% in marine protected areas. And then fifthly, we have the UN Ocean Conference coming up in Lisbon, where you will see emerging from that a raft of new supportive measures for SDG 14, the Sustainable Development Goal to conserve and sustainably use the ocean's resources. And those, those new innovations that are going to be coming out of Lisbon will be science-based and they will be based on partnerships. And I know that many in this room will be part of those partnerships. And the last one, the sixth one, is the UNFCCC COP27, Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt at the end of the year, when again, nations have to do the right thing in terms of ambition, political will, for the adaptation and the finance that we need to basically survive on this planet. And taken together, those six meetings, we do the right thing, 2022 will be the year we stop the decline. And that's why Brest and the One Ocean Summit is so important and why I've given so much support to it since the French government first asked me to get involved. Because this is the first significant ocean meeting of the year. This is where these conversations that I've just outlined to you, they and others can be propelled out of breast. And I, I know the French government will carry them forward, but I personally have committed as well because I'll be at all these meetings in Geneva and New York and Nairobi and Palau and so on to make sure that that conversation is carried through and that the conversations which we get underway in Brest will be part of the Lisbon solutions to uh, the uh, uh, integrity of SDG 14's implementation. So thank you very much and uh, thank you to the government of France for being so bold as to take this step uh, on the One Ocean Summit. Uh, look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much, Peter Thompson, Special Envoy for the Ocean. Unit Merci de, de vos mots, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général. Thank you very much, Secretary General, for your words. You'll be impressed, like many of us, in these three days, which will be made up of the first two days on the 9th and the 10th of workshops and fora, which will allow us to physically welcome, in the strictest health conditions, nearly 400 participants, uh, people, as many will be uh, at a re connected remotely, and uh, the exchanges, which will last three days, 9th and 10th February, on numerous themes and on the, the 11th, the high-level political segment, which will bring together heads of states and government, a, 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 a limited, uh, determined number of heads of states and government, leaders of the economic world and civil society will also be present. But the scientists have spoken, and I will ask her to stay in where she's sitting, uh, ask our friend Françoise Gael, biologist, um, director of research at the CNRS, what does science say about ocean and the uh, meetings to come, such as that of Brest, madame? Scientists. Uh, Scientists uh, are very, very interested uh, in what is, is going to happen in Brest and are expecting a lot from the One Ocean Summit. Federating scientists around the ocean is uh, the United Nations, which started with the launch of the uh, action decade uh, to protect the oceans. And it is thanks to this decade that France was, has launched a research program, a priority program called Ocean and Climate. And today, why protect the ocean? Because the ocean 
is changing under the influence of climate change. It is getting warmer. It is uh, uh, acidification is increasing, losing its oxygen, and we don't know uh, up until what time it will be able to play its role as a regulator of climate. The, the dynamic of the ocean could alter under the pressure of our activities, and yet the ocean is an ecosystem. It is thus that it is characterized in the Paris Agreement, which for the first time introduced the ocean in climate negotiations. And we have one single ocean, which is the largest part of the biosphere. It is the common good of humanity that we need to protect. Because this ocean makes gives us innumerable services, attenuates uh, climate warming, we've seen that, but it also supplies the oxygen that we breathe and recycles material. And it is also an enormous space of uh, wealth uh, from which we draw great benefit. It is a natural capital from which we draw without worrying about the consequences of what we take from it. And so this space becomes encumbered by a plastic and chemical waste, and all of this leads to its impoverishment. An ocean in good health is a climate that is protected, and the challenge today that we have to take up is the sustainable management of oceans. Climate change, erosion of biodiversity are urgencies uh, that we are already aware of, but uh, it is this uh, triptych, ocean biodiversity, uh, the climate, ocean and biodiversity that we have to look after. And to protect this ocean, we need to get to know it, explore it, because by far we know almost nothing of the ocean from the ocean circulation point of view, as well as the distribution of marine species, the mapping of uh, the marine bed and uh, behavior of oceans. Come to the ocean, you will see a burgeoning of ideas of research as creativity of the scientists who study the ocean or its more polar regions. The question will be that of uh, digital twinning Copernicus, environmental DNA, but also the equity of knowledge, ocean culture, and new modes of governance. Because it is not too late to look after the future of the oceans and our future with it. But to anticipate the risks of the changes in the ocean, we wish also to federate our forces around an International Panel of Scientists, initially called the IPOC, for International Panel of Experts experts on ocean change. It is the scientists who draw drew the attention on climate questions that gave birth to the IPCC. They emphasize the dangers of the erosion of biodiversity, <coughs> the IPBS, and wish to make to this, do the same thing for the oceans within the framework of a sustainable development strategy. What we wish to do with this group of scientists is to adopt an approach which allows us to assess the evolution of the behavior of oceans under the pressure of human activities. What we also propose is finally to avail of a tool for the understanding understanding of the behavior of behavior of oceans first, and then a tool to assist in the decision making of the uh, actors of the sea, decision makers, states, and then to know what strategy, strategy needs to be adopted to conserve and preserve a sustainable ocean. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francoise Gaël. Thank you for your words, for your presence, your commitment. Uh, you are sitting uh, next to an MP. P. Jimmy Pain from Brittany, second uh, circonscription of the Morbihan. You also represent the overseas President Ferrand of the National Assembly will be bringing together members of parliament during this One Ocean Summit. And Mr. Jimmy Pain, your colleague of the, the uh, Polynesia, Mr. Tevi Rofrist, uh, who's in French Polynesia, let's hope he's more uh, uh, 
votre engagement. We can hear him better. But first, uh, let's hear your commitment to, uh, for the Assembly for Oceans. Thank you, Minister, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and uh, uh, you, you, you introduced some prestigious sailors, François Gabard uh, uh, of the Vendée Globe, Rue du Rhum, uh, uh, fastest uh, in uh, sailing vessel, and uh, writers such as Eric Orsena. We salute uh, writers and uh, NGOs. Roma uh, Troubleus here, scientists who are really uh, at the core of our uh, thoughts, and our members of parliament, and my message, without whom I would not have been able to carry forward this resolution. Thank you, Maina. Thank you very much for this One Ocean Summit, which is going to be a very important moment, which will allow us to accelerate internationally on a certain number of subjects, uh, first and foremost, amongst which, as you said, Mr. Minister, is the BBNG, the high seas, and as Mr. Thompson, you rightly mentioned, all of you mentioned the fight against plastic pollution. Two ambitions on which the National Assembly expressed itself very recently, uh, voting unanimously on two resolutions. The first calling upon the success of the negotiations underway on the, the high seas of the BBNG in the United Nations. We defended it with my colleague, Kamaina Saj. The second one uh, calling for an international treaty against plastic solution with my modem colleague, Philippe Bolo. Ambassador, you rightly mentioned you have to remind the commitment of the President of the National Assembly, Richard Ferrand, for the protection of the ocean, which is a major area of parliamentary diplomacy that he wish to develop in the coming years. To work on the maritime subject uh, for the last five years now, I wish uh, to salute this unanimity. The ocean assembles, federates. Uh, it is our force uh, to be able to carry together the same message and the same hope. I'm very happy, very proud to see that France taking on the, st the status of the maritime power and taking its share of leadership in the international work. This also signifies that we need uh, the personal commitment of the ministers on all these subjects, a commitment that is commensurate with the challenges, and we need, uh, Madam Minister, mis ministers, uh, uh, the presence of all of you in New York for the last round of the BBNG negotiations. Because for the high seas, we can mark the right of the seas uh, 40 years after the historic uh, Montego Bay Accords. It is a historic opportunity. We must not miss it, and one ocean summit should allow us to mobilize more widely our European partners, international partners, in favor of the most ambitious agreement possible. The government has been working for this mobilization and the MPs as well. We call upon other MPs, other parliamentarians to take on the subject uh, and uh, show their will to put pressure on the international community and force the conclusion of an ambitious agreement. And as far as the pol plastic pollution concerned, France is legitimate to defend internationally a common, strong, sincere and sustainable ambition, fight against uh, waste, circular economy, what we know that an you know, efficient response to this scourge can only be international. So there's an important role to play to fight against this pollution, and I'm thinking in particular of the microplastic that invest our uh, ocean uh, in uh, either deterioration of uh, plastic waste or manufactured products. With to which they intentionally added. We have uh, mentioned all through uh, the, uh, given the emergency of the situation, ocean is 70 percent of the planet. It's one breath out of two. So I'm proud and happy of the initiative of the President of the Republic. I'm proud and happy to see France at the forefront of the fight for the protection of the ocean. And I'm uh, you know, waiting for the press summit uh, with great enthusiasm. And, uh, with the, uh, the ecological transition of uh, the uh, ship uh, owners. And to you, Maiwa, I salute you. Thank you. So we'll try and connect with Papete. Um, Teva, Hofrich, are you with us? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. I hope you can hear us. You represent uh, 97, uh, uh, a very large percentage of the uh, French maritime uh, uh, territory. So it was uh, only normal that you be with us. Uh, what time is it? Uh, it's four in the morning. <laughs> So this part of uh, uh, the France uh, is up early. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. 
to uh, speak and I'd like uh, to salute uh, 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 all the participants uh, and my massage. Uh, and just to see how enthusiastic we are and uh, for the, aussi, uh, the, the, the One Ocean, One Ocean Summit, I heard about the uh, natural heritage, this environment in which we live, and also the cultural heritage uh, which exists today in this big Oceania. Uh, it used to be called the missing continent, but it is actually the blue continent. And let us not forget that uh, part of this Oceania, we we speak 1,300 languages, uh, different time zones, and there's a French Oceania, Oceania from which I'm talking uh, from, uh, today, and uh, Ocean City. I often say that we live on the banks of the earth. We have a strong link uh, with this ocean which constitutes a whole in the Polynesian life. There is no separation because the ocean is what connects us, connects the islands, because it is the peoples of navigators that uh, crossed uh, the Pacific uh, Ocean, and it's a place of memory, a place where we project our ancestors. And in order not to be too long, I'd like to say that there is an important word, I believe, in Polynesian, which I wanted to share with you, which is the word ora. And ora is life, but it's the same word that is used for resilience, because ocean, the ocean is a place of opportunity. We've already we mentioned that. It's also a place uh, that is fragile, of fragility, and uh, if I may, uh, a place that uh, everybody uh, is eyeing for, and uh, the acidification of oceans, uh, that uh, it really affects us because uh, depending on the decisions of uh, major countries on the other side of the planet, uh, uh, the, uh, taken on land will affect affect us in the ocean there will be new vacant or vaha that is new boats uh, that will be built in order to create greater links so that there is a greater uh, maritime awareness worldwide ambassador you rightly mentioned with 97% uh, of the maritime presence of uh, France, uh, the French president has taken this initiative by mobilizing a certain number of heads of states and governments, mobilizing the international community for the necessity to create this uh, maritime awareness, to be able to uh, lay the basis for a sharing and awareness around these opportunities, but also the uh, fragility that the ocean makes up. So I'm very happy to be with you. You'll also be in Brest with us. And uh, it will be an opportunity to take stock, to project oneself, to understand, and to take decisions, I hope. Autour de cette identité maritime, uh, uh, around uh, the maritime uh, identity to go beyond our nationalities. And I'm really happy that it is France that has taken this initiative, that together we'll be able to build this blue, blue ocean vous, Brest, future. Uh, le, le sénateur. Well, et, um, come to, oui, peut, to press, then we can of course salute, salute the performance waking up so early to join uh, us uh, Antidia Torres, uh, uh, as Antidia Torres, uh, Antidia, you are uh, uh, surf rider, you represent surf rider, you're here to, uh, just like uh, the um, other representatives, uh, you have a difficult 
task today. Since we've gone beyond the time allotted to us, you've come in large numbers. The two young ambassadors who will get 70, uh, 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 we'll have a few seconds uh, uh, to address your message and thank you what you do for the decarbonization of uh, the maritime transport. Thank you very much for having invited us as ambassador and ministers. Uh, it was very important for Surf Rider to be here for this European year because it's also the youth year of the youth. Surf Rider is present in 12 countries of the European Union and uh, it uh, really, you know, uh, based on dialogue, dialogue with companies, uh, certification, fight against uh, aquatic waste. And an ocean, fight for an ocean that is protected. We spoke about Polynesia and the peoples who wish to live in harmony and would often look at the stars. Uh, and we decided to look at the star uh, oceans, uh, are the ambassadors of the ocean, who we call starfish, uh, such as a mission headed by Pascal Lamy at the level of the EU, with this strong, very strong involvement. Not uh, to, to, to make the youth of us uh, and just actors, but to make an intergenerational bridge for concrete action, for preservation and for the future, but also for now. So I'm going to give the floor to Lila and Arnaud to precisely give uh, some first recommendations. But uh, in this recommendation, there'll be different stopovers. There'll be the Minister of the Seas in La Rochelle to uh, build new proposals, and of course, in Brest, but also in Lisbon. So it is uh, the beginning of a a cru crusade for a healthier uh, ocean. Du coup, uh, bonjour. Lila, first maybe. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity and to participate with you today. So I'm an ambassador, but I'm also an engineer, and I work on plastic pollution every day. So contributing to sorting out this issue is uh, what drives me. And ocean pollution um, is a matter for the future of our planet. It is a vital uh, challenge uh, for us, whoever, wherever we live. Um, uh, by the coast or, or anywhere I, I come from Toulouse, but this is relevant to all of us. And I'm very pleased it is um, more topical than ever that we can organize um, such a summit, in particular in France. We, of course, want to contribute uh, to um, contribute to the various uh, workshops. We can talk about the key challenges, uh, but we very much want to talk about the solutions. Um, we want to talk about education, and as a, a young um, member of the European Union, we very much want to insist upon the necessity of coordinating within the EU through a, a blue um, a maritime association. We want to connect uh, the politicians, the researchers, the students, the citizens, um, everyone uh, must be involved for the oceans. Um, it is um, now more time than ever to work on education, and we very much want to contribute collectively. Well, hopefully, we'll make your wish a reality, says um, Mr. Poivre d'Avaux. Uh, the European Commission will be uh, represented, so I hope it can help you uh, set up your blue um, Erasmus Plus. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador Arnaud. Um, I'm 21. I come from Nice, and I invite you to come to Nice in the summer and just see by yourself what the, the beaches look like, what the, the Mediterranean Sea looks like, and you will understand where we want to, to commit. Um, and thank you, Mr. Ambassador for inviting us here in Paris and then to Brest in a few days to contribute to the discussions. Together with my colleagues, we uh, made a diagnosis. The boat is drowning. Nonetheless, we, the young people, we want to work with all of those attending the summit um, in Brest, just like in La Rochelle. And we would like to thank two stakeholders uh, who will be represented, the states, the governments, and more specifically as well, the local authorities, because we very much believe they have a 
clear role to play um, they are the, the closest to the people in this respect. And then, of course, the private sector, the companies, some of them indeed um, apply some uh, genuine uh, criteria, standards, social responsibility, for example, but some of us are betting on this um, um, uh, transition and they are uh, putting forward some um, um, technical solutions and we very much would like to promote them. So, Mr. Ambassador, our expectations are very clear. Three words. Concrete, concrete, and concrete. Thank you. Well, that will be difficult for the governments uh, attending, uh, but given that you mentioned um, uh, the mayor of uh, Brest and uh, the head of the Brit Brittany region, I would like to pay tribute to their work. Francois, when it comes to racing, you know how to do it. Francois Gabard, yes, um, for me, as a the sailor, this summit is not just for those who love um, oceans, it is not just for the maritime countries, because it is relevant to the whole of mankind. Uh, there is no possible life on Earth if the ocean is ill. Um, the air we breathe, the connection between climate change and uh, the oceans is obvious. Um, no matter where we live, in the Himalayas or on the coast, we all breathe the same air. So all of these challenges are relevant to, to all of us. And as an ambassador, I very much would like to emphasize the importance of these. Second comment, the oceans are not a hurdle, they're not a barrier, they're not a limit. And the sailor, I can say it, it is a gateway, it is a way to, it is something we can cross easily, or rather easily. It is a connection between all of us all around the planet, for all of the human beings, and precisely for those who are not at sea, nonetheless, we all use goods and that are transported by boat. So maritime transport is relevant to all of us. I believe that in Europe, 90% of the goods that we use um, are transported. I see. So I'm sure there's some solutions for maritime transport. We need to decarbonate the maritime transport. We're working on it. And one last thing, which is more um, some sort of a dream. My dream was, has always been that we could travel around the planet thanks to the oceans, that we could go very far. And I believe that the oceans are part of the um, imaginary, imagination of all of us. And I hope that tomorrow our kids will still be able to dream that they can travel the world, go to Polynesia, but for them to be able to do this. We need the oceans to be in good health, to be protected, to be um, at peace, hence the importance of this summit in a few days. Thank you. So what is your next challenge at sea? Well, it is uh, the route, uh, route de Rome, the Rome route at the end of the year. Thank you very much, François Gabart. We have a few more minutes. Uh, I would like us to listen to Eric Orsena, a writer and a sailor. He, uh, maybe he could say a few words. In terms of exchange. Voilà. Sur Sénat, vous êtes assis sur euh, un siège qui est à l'Académie française, celui de Pasteur. Within the French Academy, you're sitting where Pasteur and Cousteau used to. Indeed, I have um, this honor. It is very intimidating. I sit where Cousteau used to, just uh, before I came in, and before now there was Pasteur. And for me, it is exactly the same thing. We were discussing it with Francois. As a matter of fact, what did Pasteur teach us? He taught us what to see what we couldn't see before, um, microbes, and we'd better know them if we want to be able to, to cure people. And what did Cousteau teach us? 
um, he taught us how to listen to the world of silence. And uh, myself, I would like to say that uh, writing or sailing is the same thing. At sea, there is no path. It is for each and everyone to find his or her own path. This is life. Thank you. So, Sina, you are working on um, the La Perouse, um, vessel as well so that it can sail again and we would like to thank you for that any questions from all friends from the press the media who are with us today in the room Laurent Miguet Moniteur des Travaux Publics et du Bâtiment part of the hope comes from the maritime protected areas but what are they being protected against? Because we see that um, windmills are being um, constructed at sea, sometimes very close to protected areas. Is that um, a choice that was made? Is there any decision as to um, the uh, consolidation of this concept of maritime, um, uh, protected maritime areas in France in particular? Madam Minister, uh, maybe. Well, it will be an international summit, so we will not be addressing any domestic issues. Indeed, but like I said earlier, a Ministry of the Seas is about planning, planning at sea. This is nothing um, obvious. Um, sailors always care about freedom, but it is also about planning. Planning. And when you look at windmills at sea and they all need to be anchored um, and depending on where they are, uh, we of course have uh, major discussions. We have to make some strong decisions. Some were already taken by the French government. We share them with uh, Europe. And of course, everywhere along the coast, it means that we need to have discussions as to the pros and cons and how to build this world of tomorrow, this world of the sea. We need, of course, to protect it. And at the same time, um, um, when the seas have to play a role in terms of development. Other questions? We prepared some documents for the press, uh, but of course, uh, these documents do not cover everything at the moment. But feel free to ask questions today. Sir, uh, the ambassador of Portugal, maybe? Okay. We'll give you a microphone, sir. Portugal is very much committed together with France, and we're very much uh, happy, very happy to have you. I'll be very brief, just simply to say that some of the important aspects have already been emphasized, and I'll use the formula, no climate without ocean, blue economy is crucial, similarly to green transition, which will be very important from an economic development point of view, blue economy as well. And I would say that, that there is no green without blue. And if you will allow me, there won't be any uh, Brest without Lisbon and Lisbon without Brest. Thank you for having uh, invented a new dessert, uh, the Brest Lisbon, because there was the Paris Brest cake that we have, and now we have a Brest Lisbon cake. May I ask uh, the minister to kindly say a few words of conclusion? I'll just conclude unless we stay all day here. I'd be happy to welcome you longer, but I wanted to uh, encourage you to go to Brest. Uh, the of uh, this uh, event. Thank you for having participated here in the Quai d'Orsay, the aim of which was to launch the One Ocean Summit of Brest. And it's a first. It's a first. Never ha happened before. The President of the Republic really wished to uh, make this strong you know, commitment uh, 
As uh, very uh, struck by the exchanges that took place, uh, the declaration of Peter Thompson saying that uh, the year 2022 was going to be crucial for all the challenges that have been mentioned here together. And Brest really wishes to be the first step in these commitments and this uh, cycle of uh, decisions uh, that will be essential in going to New York, passing through Lisbon. I think we have to get to New York uh, to end the trip. Uh, to the headquarters of the United Nations, and it's a kind of um, anticipation uh, that uh, the uh, Brest encounter will constitute and mobilization as well. I'm struck by the fact that over and beyond the participants of uh, professional organizations and uh, uh, NGOs, uh, the communities and uh, their heads of states, uh, and organizations that uh, have their uh, word to say in terms of the organization of the COPs and the maritime challenges which are crucial for us. The Brest uh, meeting will be essential. And I must admit that as a Minister of Foreign Affairs, I'm very happy that it's taking place in France. And as a Briton, I'm very happy that it's taking place in Brest. The world uh, capital of the maritime for three days, uh, and I invite you to share those beautiful three days with us. Thank you, Minister. It is the Bagat Long Bee Way that will be welcoming you on the 9th of February for a 72-hour marathon, three days of meetings and commitments as well around the President of the Republic. Uh, so meeting in Brest and the Atelier des Capucins for those who can be there. For health reasons, we can't you know, welcome a lot of people. You, or 100,000 have been registered. Why not a million, 100 million, a billion? So online, uh, of course, uh, uh, will uh, make it accessible to uh, everybody and in many languages. And you're all welcome. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. Thank you very much to the youth. And, uh, we will meet in two weeks' time, exactly. Thank you.